So the goal of HiveMapper is to continuously generate fresh and high quality data and to enable anybody to access that. So uh, we need to be able to have some sort of system that drives the supply via the demand that wants to consume the data and also to enforce some level of compliance so that all this data is standardized, it's high quality data, it's reliable. And we do that through this token system. It's a utility token. So the token is what is rewarded and it's also what is used to consume the data. So how are these rewarded? Um, I think that's the question on everybody's mind here. So every week we run a rewards payout and that's minted from a pool of four billion honey tokens that's set out for that. And additionally, any honey tokens that were burned to consume the data are additionally rewarded out uh, to all the people that contributed. So the great thing about this system is it's also really robust to any blockchain outages or fault tolerance issues. So we're really excited about that. And then how do we get back to the fairness po point? Uh, rewards are split between regions. So regions are, you'll see some images soon, I believe. Regions are uh, split around the world. They can be arbitrarily sized. They can represent cities, countries, interesting parts of a county. Um, it could be anything. And so we need a way to fairly distribute tokens according to that. And so we have something called a region multiplier, which we'll go into a little more detail in a minute, as well as something called progress, map progress. So map progress can be realized in any region and that determines how many tokens are minted and rewarded and distributed to the contributors there. So you can kind of see here, uh, we have like a Los Angeles metropolitan, like MSA region. We also have a bunch of other regions and like the whole world really is a region and we're stamping out specific subregions is a good way to think about this. But how do you fairly divide rewards amongst all the regions? Uh, you have to account for things like the size of the region, the road density, the number of people, the commercial value, how we're rolling this out. And we define that by a system of rules instead of curating it individually. So that way we can ensure it's fair and open how these rewards are defined. So map progress is what really drives the speed at which these rewards are minted and distributed to the contributors. So every week, each region's progress is tallied up, and that determines how many of these honey tokens are created, well, minted and distributed to all the contributors in those regions. So you'll see this chart here. It's a little different than some of the other charts you might have seen, where it's a, this is like a maximum speed limit. And the reason we do this is because we want to be fair. Uh, we want to make sure that any sort of contributor, especially any early adopter, is like heavily rewarded. However, we don't want to penalize anybody who doesn't have access or who has not been onboarded yet. And so this whole system allows us to balance both really elegantly. So we have three main factors for map progress. Coverage, activity, and resilience. So coverage, you can think about how much unique road was captured in that past uh, reward period. So a week, as we've been saying. Activity is the volume of active contributors. And then resilience is what I think is really interesting. It's how robust that coverage is with respect to the number of contributors there. So how confident can you be that the, this sort of coverage is gonna continue as time goes forward? Uh, if you think about one or two people mapping everything 24 seven, I wouldn't really bet on that continuing because what happens if they like fall asleep eventually? <laughs> So we want to make sure that it's really well distributed throughout the entire community of a region. And that lets us do other great things like reward teamwork and encourage uh, a more collaborative environment. So there are a bunch of other uh, factors that contribute to rewards. I won't go through everything listed here, but some of the really interesting ones are novelty. So we define novelty as I'll back up a little. We want fresh data everywhere. However, if you think of like a main arterial road, like Market Street in San Francisco, people are driving up and down that, well, they were until they blocked cars on part of it. 
Uh, but Mission Street, people are driving up and down that every day. Um, you know, that the freshness of that doesn't have a lot of value necessarily. It's diminishing returns. But we still want very fresh data. So novelty is really the way we well distribute that across the entire region. So we make sure we're capturing fresh data everywhere. So all the suburban streets, all the neighborhoods, all the industrial complexes, and all the commercial corridors as well. And the other big one is quality, of course. The image quality as well as the compliance quality. Um, you can't mount a camera up like in a weird angle or like pointing inward at you. So all of those things contribute to something called reputation, which I'll go a little bit into now. Um, we are continuously checking all of the content that's coming in. There's both AI automatic checks as well as human in the loop AI checks and then you saw a screenshot before, a purely human QA tool. So all of these are great, and one of the great things about all of these computer vision and sensor fusion approaches we use to check quality is the artifacts from that actually generate like pretty amazing map data. So if Alice drives and sees a sign, Bob should also see the sign in the same location, and the way we do that check is to actually extract the exact world position where that sign is and any semantic information about that sign, and we're left with artifacts that are essentially a very fresh, up-to-date, semantic map of the region. Um, I wanna pause for any questions. I know a lot of people have asked a lot of questions about honey and tokens and rewards. Yes. Yeah. That's a great question. So there are two things uh, to add to that. Uh, you, you can't collect data outside of predefined time periods. So we don't want night data currently. In the future that might change as the network evolves and becomes more complex with the rules. But for now we're keeping it simple, uh, just daytime driving. And that's defined by the position and the sun. Uh, we, use, uh, we, we don't want twilight necessarily. We don't want the sun blinding the camera. But we want it like roughly overhead but also fair, like you should be able to drive on your way to work and your way home. Um, the other one is something around image clarity. It's a complicated one. If it's pouring rain, the content probably doesn't have much utility. And at the end of the day, we're really trying to reward utility. Uh, we want people to consume the data and your reward should be commensurate with how many people want to consume your data, how much value is derived from that. So. Our hardware is really good, so if it's drizzling, it, raining like in San Francisco, it's probably good, because you can probably still see very, very clearly. But other places where it's like a torrential downpour, I mean, it's not even safe to be driving necessarily. Uh, similarly, if you, take the, if you take the opportunity to mount the camera on the outside of your vehicle, you're not gonna have all of the blurry raininess as well. So there are other things you can do to mitigate any sort of quality ding for weather, besides just you know choosing when to collect. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the reputation for the contributor is something that's um, it's it's long living. So it's it's hard to build a really good reputation, but it's very easy to destroy it. We do alert people about conditions where you, know, you should probably don't want to contribute bad data, and we do that in the application. So if your mount becomes misaligned, it flags a tool to help realign it. Or if the image quality has an issue, we let the user know. We, like, it's, our, it's in everybody's interest to only contribute the highest quality data, and we do as much as we can to help. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so we have a lot of cool sensors in our hardware. Uh, I think we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Uh, for example, we have very high precision IMUs which allow us to detect the orientation of the camera in real time. And then on the phones and the devices themselves, we have processing capacity to do like blurry image detection, all of those other issues like hood detection. Um, that's a famously hard one because if you look at some older cars, the hood for some reason stylistically is like super long. <laughs> And you don't really want that in your map data.
Great. Thank you.